to this point where we're taking an existing building and uh, turning it into a building affected by the ravages of winter weather. We've looked at putting uh, a Metablob ecosystem to simulate uh, snow cover and we've looked at uh, icicle ecosystems on various components. Uh, you may be able to see that I've gone ahead and populated a few more um, icicle ecosystems uh, by editing the materials as previously discussed. So in this uh, short tutorial I want to look at um, uh, how we can make the walls of the building look as though there is ice and snow on top of the planks. So if we go ahead and press Control and click on the item we want to edit, so I'm editing this end wall panel, and we'll look at editing the material. At the moment it's just a simple image file, a little bit of filtering going on to amend the colour slightly. Here we're going to add a layer. So the layer comes in, it's flat grey, you can see it's covered the whole of the face of the building. We want it to look like snow, so the obvious pl first place to start would be to look at the colour. Our first instinct would be to make it completely white. However, sometimes a little bit of artistic interpretation needs to be thought about. And I like to give the snow a little bit of a, a tinge of blue to it, just to make it that little cooler. can't see much in terms of, of the colour change here because of the lighting model that I'm using. What we need to look at is this alpha boost. So we've got the alpha production and the alpha boost. At the moment it's completely opaque. You can't see through it. It's a solid sheet. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit the function. So up comes the function editor and you can see the colour is constant at this moment. We can look at changing the colour later if we like to, but at the moment we're really interested in this alpha. And you can see that it's connected through to the colour map, it's completely flat. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a fractal, just a simple fractal. I don't believe in making things overly complicated. So we've added a fractal and we would connect that through to the alpha. Click on altitude and let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got a, you can just see the beginnings of the planks starting to come through. But we're going to edit this alpha a little bit further. We're going to have a look at the preview while we're working. I know that by increasing the roughness we get a, a larger contrast between the white and the black. Remember the white is going to be transparent. I'm also uh, familiar with the fact that the way to control this is not tremendously easy. And I want smaller patches of transparency. So in this instance, I'm going to add a filter. And that filter I'm going to make opposite. So the white becomes black, the black becomes white. I did this because of the controlling of the largest feature. I know that it can, really wants to work inversely for this particular material. So as we go down, we get larger patches of black compared to the white. Remember, the white is going to be transparent. Another thing we need to think about is I know, for instance, on that material here, for the wall, we have some bumpiness. I don't want to lose that bumpiness. This ice or snow is following the contours of the existing wall. It's not making it completely flat. So I'm going to add the bumpiness of the snow material to the wall material, thereby breaking it up a little bit. Let's do a quick preview render. And we'll see what we've ended up with. So you can see... We've got some nice areas of wood showing through. We've got a fairly consistent covering of snow or ice. But what I think is we can try reducing the alpha boost. 
let's say to 35%. That means it's not going to be such a complete covering. It's going to be kind of semi-transparent. So again, we'll do a preview render to see what effect that's had. So you can see now that the patchiness of the snow or ice has, has been reduced somewhat. It's a little bit more natural looking. Now again, in the previous videos, we discussed the idea that heat rises, therefore at the top of the building would be warmer, assuming that our chap has got a, a fire going in there. Let's face it, it'd be a fool not to in weather like this. So I'm going to look at the distribution of this material. So we're going to look at its presence. And I'm going to drop it down quite a way, let's say to 0 0.31. But again, we're going to make the fuzziness of the top increase that a little bit so that it blends more consistently and a preview render. So you can see now we've lost that covering at the top. It's dropped down a little bit, but it's fading away as the altitude increases. I think we'll have a little bit more, otherwise there's no point in doing the exercise at all. Quick preview render. That's better. So it's increasing as it goes up the side of the building. In an ideal world, you'd go through the whole of this, um, making sure that we've got that consistency of detail. Same thing again on every surface. It is possible to um, save out this alpha detail so we can right click and we can copy the function. And because it's world standard, the distribution of the materials will be different wherever you use that alpha. So if I copy that function, OK, I'm going to click this sidewall, right click edit material, we're going to add a layer again. We're going to make it slightly bluey white, not tremendously. We don't want it to look ridiculous. Remember to adjust the bumps so that we are adding. And remember to adjust the presence. So because this side is getting more wind, shall we say, it's not going to go down as low. OK. But we are now going to right click and we're going to paste our function. Preview render. And you can see we've got some snow and ice down at lower levels on this wall. It's a fairly simple trick, but it helps to, to build up the realism. It means that you don't have to completely do new textures every single time. Procedural materials really are a, a blessing uh, in this kind of situation. I hope you found it useful. Uh, please check with us on social media and YouTube regularly for more tips and tricks from Eon Software. Thank you. Bye-bye.